drugs and alcohol can ruin your life. Stay away from drugs. I see somebody, they was, um, they said, yo, talk about how it really was back in, you know. Like to wear polo and shit like that, like to get fly, man. Nigga, you probably get chased by a whole school, man. You ever see somebody get chased by a whole school? One person, one person, there's one person with 500 people chasing him for his coat. Just the type of shit they used to happen in Brooklyn, man. Yo, at a split second, shit could get very real, man. You like, yo, where the fuck all these people coming from? What they looking for? Oh, they looking for get the fuck out of here. You better be on defense. Cause them niggas is on offense, man. That's how a lot of dudes got their hands forced and shit like that, man. That's how a lot of dudes got their motherfucking hands for us, man. It's like you had a you had a lot of good kids, man, that turned bad. Because the environment. You had a lot of niggas who got their hands for us. Probably let it go. Got tied up. And caught a football number just because of a motherfucking split second reaction. You know what I'm saying? Split second reaction. Motherfucking whole life change. Because the streets will force your fucking hand like that, man. to force your fucking hand, man. I seen it happen to a lot of people, man. But like that polo shit, though, man. Shit. That shit, that shit possessed people, man. That shit took over niggas' minds, man. Because you had the niggas... You had two type of people. You had the, the boosters that was able to get it. So they were showcasing all that shit. It forced everybody else's hand to want to to want to want to get involved. And then when the demand grows like that, when you got more of a demand, then the market could be fucking met because you had everybody that want to get it, but they didn't know how to get it. They didn't know where to get it. A lot of people like yo. I, I don't even know where to start to get it. They they just right. You just had a few people that probably knew yo it was at Macy's. Yo, they sell it at Macy's. That was about it. But um, all the other like part of the masses, they didn't they didn't know where to get that shit from. They just listened to the boosters. So a lot of people didn't, you know, they had to follow the boosters. They didn't know where to get the shit from. We basically, you know, brought that around. So the streets got their influence from like the fucking the the boosters and the hustlers, of course, because you know only the hustlers was able to afford shit and the boosters is the only ones that was able to get that shit like you know what I mean five figure discount and uh we did all the marketing for all these fucking big companies and shit like that man basically cause people didn't know about none of this shit and then the more and more they see you know these sprinkles of people coming through like this then it's like Dudes is dressed like the mannequin. Dudes is dressed like the mannequin, man. 
And he said, call me the human mannequin. Bitches in school. The human mannequin. It's crazy. So you had that, and then it's like, yo, you gotta you gotta worry about fucking niggas trying to jump on you. Like if you wasn't like if you wasn't like trained to go, don't be rocking that low, man. That's like rocking low in the 80s was like a red dude going through a blue hood or a blue dude going through a red hood. You know what I mean? Like, Crips go through a blood hood, blood, like, that type of, like, tension, you know, like, you're going through, like, flagging, all crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, dudes in the West, they can relate with that. Like, know what, what I'm saying? Like, you know it's on. It's like, yo, you know you drawing this attention to yourself. Niggas might press you. It's guaranteed certain places you're not going to be able to just walk all the way through the block, whistling Dixie, and niggas don't try to press you or send the air raid at you. You know what I'm saying? That's how it be, man. That's how it was. Back in the 80s, just using that as a, as a, you know, like an analogy. Where you know, people can get it. It's like, you know you going through like your enemy's hood. You flagged up, star-spangled, bandered up. With a whole hood can see you. You know it's going to be some type of words. But you like, fuck it anyway. That's how I was in Brooklyn. Rocking low. During this time, 70, 80% of Brooklyn is violent. Like any street it can happen on. 80% of Brooklyn. That's a large percentage of like... Because Brooklyn, you know, it's a, it's a borough. It's one of the, you know, biggest boroughs uh, in New York City. And it has multiple neighborhoods, you know, within this borough. So you had a handful. I'm just excluding, like, the, uh, they say, like, the white hoods. You know what I mean? Where it may not have been that active like that. You know what I mean? They had they they politics, you know what I'm saying? Like the Italians and you know what I mean, Jews, whatever like that. But I'm talking about straight up wild nigga violence. Street violence. That was like eighty percent of motherfucking Brooklyn. Large percent of Brooklyn was fucking um was you know, predominantly black. You know, uh, black and Spanish. It was predominantly black, though. And uh, then you had, like, those white neighborhoods where it's like, uh, you know, you had the Bensonhurst, the Sheepshead Bays, Park Slopes, um, Brooklyn Heights, you know, Williamsburg. Like, those little five hoods right there. Sunset Park, six of like, that was, like, you know, more white. Sunset Park was, like, you know, Spanish, shit like that. But, you know, give or take. So, but everything else, all the other hoods, is all, is black. So, where you going to school at, you know, they, they keep niggas with niggas, shit like that. But, like, they have, like, you know, you could get, like, Go to different schools, like, outside of your zone. You know, you, you was able to pick your own high schools. Back then, it wasn't like zone schools. You was able, when we was graduated junior high school, it was like, what trade you want to take up? They let us know which schools um, um, were into certain trades. You had certain true schools that was like, 
more like electrician trades. Then you have like automotive. Then you have, um, you know, like they specialize vocational, you know, specialize in, in different things. So you look, you're like, oh, I might want to be this when I grow up. So let me start getting on this wave and go to these schools, you know. So sometimes, like, you can live in a neighborhood and you have to travel from where you live deep in Brooklyn, like, all the way to fucking Manhattan. Or in some case, you know, Queens, you know what I mean? Some cases, even fucking Bronx, depending on what type of shit, you know what I mean? And uh, it was crazy. You know what? I, I think about it now, man. Like, all the Brooklyn kids, like, they were sending out. Like, they had they had kids from Brooklyn going to school in Manhattan, Queens, Bronx, but never none of them was coming to schools in Brooklyn. That's wild, man. It was like they subconsciously was training Brooklyn niggas to be pirates. Getting on them trains, that was like our boats across seas. That was, you know, we was we was the pirates. Because Nobody from Queens, Staten Island, Bronx, or Harlem went to my school in Brooklyn, went to South Shore. But Brooklyn, they set this any everywhere. Motherfuckers was going to um 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 what's that tech? Um what's this shit? The shit that was DCEP headquarters, they used to call it shit printing um, um Park West. Shit like that. That that Martin Luther King, um, they were sending motherfuckers to uh Murray uh Murray Bertram, motherfucking um LaGuardia. Uh they were sending niggas all over the place, man, for school. Outside of Brooklyn, man.